We might be drunk, we might be drunk, as long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk. Raise a glass, let's talk shit, head peeps, Rex, and a bit, maybe drunk, we might be drunk, yeah. Yo. I feel like I always start it, you start it. All right, I'll I start it. I don't want to hog it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for, you're, you're very, uh, you're a selfless guy. Well, I try to, you know, be in the e- equality. <laughs> um, well, you were asking me right before this, and I was like, let's save it, because I like to just talk yeah, whatever we're talking about. Sure. You don't know what do not disturb is on your phone? Well, I said, hey, are you going to go airplane mode? You said do not disturb. I go do not disturb all day. What does that mean? Well, I miss a lot of calls because I do this. Uh-huh. Just, it just doesn't alert. It doesn't. Your phone doesn't ring. Okay. And you don't see the text, but I just get to the text when I see the text. Oh, uh-huh. so I love that. It doesn't light up. Exactly. Oh, I like that. Save some battery. Well, it saves battery, but it's also you're just like, every time your phone vibrates, you're like distracted. Right, this right. way you can kind of like be like, I'll deal with it all at once. I like that. I like that. Okay. What do I push? You just do this thing here. Okay. You swipe down Got and then it. you do the little moon. Oh, the moon. I never knew what the moon did. I thought it was some kind of night mode or some shit. This kind of is night mode. I you guess see, so. you away from me. And you were saying before this that I you got it. you got weirded out by our friend Salacuse. You helped him pick up his kid and that I don't know why that weirded you out. Well, me and Fat Sally were hitting a diner and he was like, Oh shit, it's three ten or whatever, or two thirty, I gotta go pick up my kid. And I was like, Ah, I'll see you later. And he was like, Well, ah, it's two blocks away in Hell's Kitchen. I was like, All right. So I walk over there, and it's just this, you know, public school with a hundred parents outside, and they're all like Billy, Timmy, and the kids running their arms. I was like, I gotta get out of here. It was too much. It was too wholesome, and you know, his kids is so cute. I guess that's better than the opposite. We're like, I gotta do this more often. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, that's uh, true. But that's weird that it's just parents. Yeah, I don't know. It made me think about my parents, and then I was like, Do I want a kid? And then I I took one home. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It was just uh, it was too feely, and then. His kid had another kid with him, and he had chocolate all over his mouth, and the whole thing was cute, and the kid wouldn't <laughs> shut up, and I had to hold one of their hands, and we went to a bodega, and Sally Hughes bought him a, a Snickers, and they were like, oh, my God, and it was it was too much. Dude, candy to a kid. Oh, man. You see why these pedophiles go straight to the candy? They love it. It works. They really, candy, what is it with kids, by the way, with, like, chocolate and it just they cannot hit their the inside of their I mouth. Know. It's like all always like a chocolate beard. That's true. Yeah, I mean it looks like they're all eating ass, and uh, <laughs> it's a problem. But I think their their what do you call it? Their uh, hand eye coordination isn't as skilled. We have yeah. years and years of hours of dick. That's why you can also hit kids. <laughs> yes, they're they... terrible with the blocking. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun? This is a dark open, right? Yeah, here. that's true. Well, I was about to get darker, but wouldn't it be fun to just I feel like, how many kids do you think you could take before they took you down? I'm talking like five-year-old. How many? I think I could take them all. I'm They're talking, five. but it's an unlimited amount just yeah. coming at you. You hit them once or they go down, I think. Yeah, I mean, you could kick to the face. It's that perfect height. Yeah, for sure. So you think like 100? I think if if no one really got hurt, it'd be like a fun video game type thing. Yes. Just to see how many you could pull off. Oh, and you could throw them. You could throw them into each other. You could spin them. And hit he hit all the other ones. Oh my god! You feel like Conor McGregor for just a minute. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like when you play Kid Jeopardy and you're like, "I'm a genius." <laughs> What's two plus two? You're like, "Oh my god, I'm killing this." I'm, I brought a fun one in today. Look at that. What the hell is this? It looks like, like a forty. It's a it's a natural wine. Wow. The guy at the store called it very drinkable. Ooh. <laughs> Which uh, I guess any liquor could be, <laughs> as, if you're... as opposed to what. But he said it just it goes down real easy. Wow, it looks like a soda. It looks like an old school soda. Yeah, it's natural, so the hangover's not as bad. And he he said it's good stuff, so let's give it a go, man. And a pop top, like a like a Coke. Oh my God, this is very exciting. You're introducing me all these new drugs. Well, I'm introducing myself to it. I don't know. Oh it. boy, oh boy. Ooh, it looks like wine. We'll see if it tastes. It's like a it. nice bold red. I'm gonna give this a a sniff. You know who's a bold Ooh. red. Christina Hendricks, Mad. Oh man, I'd like to roam those hills. <laughs> there we go. Cheers. We look like a couple, a couple of old Italian men with these little wine glasses, you know. Oh, that's pretty good. It's like bitter too. Ooh wee! 
that's got a kick. <laughs> that's us in a couple years right there. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know if I would re- refer to this as very drinkable. What do really? you think? It's good. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying. The guy did look like an alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. This feels like a like a down on your luck in a gutter drink. All right. But gutter uh, wine. Yeah, gutter wine. That's a that's, that's a fun a name for a wine. Great name for a wine. Ooh, we could do something with that. Yeah, gutter wine. That's like Coppola just has the wine now. That's like his thing. Oh, now. really? Yeah, that's because I mean it's crazy. We were talking about it last yeah. week, like the maybe it was the Patreon, whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know how you kind of go out on your terms, like that's what Tarantino's doing. But Coppola, right. it's like he can't make shit. I know, isn't that so weird? The guy, you know, the Godfather, probably one of the best. Gangster movies, if not the best of all time, cannot get a gig in Hollywood. Yeah. It's all out of whack. Out of whack. By the way, get on the Patreon because you're the Patreon is us after the Eps, so we've got like, you know, tons of alcohol in us. <laughs> so it's a different show. It gets more uh, real. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> you got to yeah. pay extra for that. Right. I mean, you thought beating up kids was something. Wait till you see the Patreon. We uh content. yeah so go to patreon.com slash we might be drunk pod and give us a review on the iTunes it's pretty good very good I bet it gets more drinkable as I we, think you're right as we go yeah I'm into think, it I think the first sip is not supposed to be like I can have a whole bottle I think that <laughs> that comes right I hate to be a coos but you put two ice cubes in there I bet it's I bet it helps yeah well it just keeps it because it's so cold right now it, it helps I can't it. get behind i can't get behind the ice cubes and wine i've never done it but this i feel like would would do it this is going to segue into my wreck can i give you mm. i just rewatched sideways oh my god i love sideways it's like the perfect movie to watch anytime yes alexander payne yeah yeah so good Paul Giamatti's great, and the the him and Thomas Hayden Church like chemistry, oh, it's, it's so amazing. Good. It's so it's so real. Yeah, it is. Because you do have that friend where you're like, I'm just friends with him because we grew up together. Right. He drives me nuts. I love him, but he's not a good human being. Right. And like everyone has that friend. Yes. You know, and like, yeah, the the way he just couldn't turn it off. Like he's like literally he's on his fucking. You know, this is supposed to be like a quiet. Yeah. Like just try some wines, and he's like, "I can't, I need to fuck everyone." Like, <laughs> like literally the scene in the end where the, like the heavy oh waitress, he's like, he's like, "I bet she'd be two tons of fun." He's like, "Can't we just yeah. have a meal?" I know. And then the other guy's going through a divorce or a book. He's like, he can't get his book sold or yeah. something's going on. Giamatti, like he's waiting to hear. On yeah, the book. I was like, oh shit, that's such a relatable phone call. So where, good. Uh, where you're on with your agent, and they're just like, for whatever reason, this one's not gonna go. And I'm like, oh fuck. How that many one, of those have we heard? <laughs> Too many. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, we're on YouTube, folks. But, yeah. <laughs> it. But that is – how did he think of that? You know, you hear a premise, and we go, oh, that could be a bit. Or, or a director or a writer is like, that's a movie. That premise is a movie. This – it's just so loosey-goosey, like two friends on a wine retreat kind of thing. It doesn't really have bones there, but yet – pain was so good he's like no no this is gonna be big but it's mapped out like you keep like you know it, it doesn't feel like it does but things keep happening like i i watch it differently each time i watch it because mm. it's like the perfect comedy but it also has like those scenes where you're like no this is like moving some of these yes scenes, so there's that there's those parts where, like if you haven't seen it sorry just giving some spoilers here but there's the part where you know he tells her Basically, he slipped. He let he sees that woman he likes, Maya. Yeah, and he lets it slip that you know, as he's banging her good friend, right? That he's getting married. So there's like things where she's like, "You fucking lied to me." There's like stakes yep, raised. Yep. He lies to her about the book. There's little things, yeah, that you're like, "Ooh, shit, is he gonna get caught for this?" So they they build the. There's still like a plot, yeah, even though sure. it doesn't feel like it. Though it doesn't feel it's like that. It. Lucy, a movie, yeah. You know those comics you see where they're saying brilliant shit, but the technique is hidden. You know, it's not like da 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 da. Yeah, but they're still killing. Like a Patrice O'Neill, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that movie is like that, where there's yes. a there's an arc and an A story and a B story and act one act two but you don't feel it and when shit happens it almost surprises you because that's the type of movie you can lose yourself in where you're like this 
I love a movie that makes you laugh one minute and then makes you be like, oh, fuck, that was like a great. Yeah. That was like a great monologue. There's a whole totally. thing where, I mean, it's like kind of cheesy, but it works because Giamatti's such a good actor when he just has this whole monologue about why he loves Pinot Noir. Right. And it's like, well, it's, you know, it's not, people don't like the slightest thing. It doesn't work. It's not respected by people the way this is. And it's yeah. like, oh, that's how you feel yeah. about yourself. I, I love that. I just great love it. I mean, it's like, a, I mean, it's a, it's an obvious thing, but it's just like, I, I was like, ah, it's just like so many lines like yeah. that that are, that just rock. And it's great because it's one of those movies where he, I bet it was written for him and mine because yeah. he's so good at it. And he was, that was his breakout. Totally breakout. Well, he was in uh, American Splendor. Private parts, too. Yeah. Well, he was, he was, I think, known as a really good actor. American Splendor, great movie. Yeah. But like, I don't think he was known as like, yeah. Oh, as like a, like well, this guy's box office right now. Right, you know? I think he was just known as a really good actor. Yeah, almost like a Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, like the ugly guy, but he's so talented. But I feel like this movie let him be, let him show showcase how great he really is, and and kill. He's it. incredible, incredible. And Thomas Hayden Church was all I knew was Wings. Remember, yeah. he was lo loyal or Lyle or Lowell in Wings. I you ever seen Wings? That. No, no. Oh my sure. god. Tampon with wings, uh, maxi pad. But yeah, he, he. It was a horrible sitcom that I watched every episode. It came on after Cheers, and that's the only reason Ooh, it got a any good love. Lead in. Great lead in. Cheers was the number one show on TV. Wings eventually, or Cheers moved. Wings got canceled. Seinfeld went in after Cheers, and that's wow. what saved Seinfeld. Holy shit! Fun fact. Damn. I've read every uh, book on Seinfeld. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Just because the show is such, it's such an unheard of kind of show. It's so innovative and weird. And it was bombing for f four seasons. It was bombing. And then it got on after Cheers and it saved it. Um, no, they would never let a show breathe no, like that anymore. No way. No way. And then it becomes the best show of all a time. A show is like a good drinkable wine. Yes. Sometimes it needs a minute to breathe. Here, here. Anything. I mean, there's a lot of comics who it's like I feel like didn't find themselves until a certain point, and then they like kind of turn that corner. Oh, like you could yeah. even say that about like Louis C.K. Oh, you know? for sure, rock. Yes, rock. His old stuff. You're like, all right, he's just like an angry guy, whatever, and then he just clicked. Yeah. I mean, there's that old story about like Louis and Sarah Silverman and a couple other guys. David Tell went to go see him at Caroline's. Like, oh, he's been on the road for like two years. We haven't seen him. Headlines, Caroline's. They're all in the back like, what is this? This is new. It was Bring the Pain. They'd never seen it, and they saw it live, and they're like, who's this guy? I could never do this. So it changed the game. You've heard that story with Martin Lawrence about that? No. Oh, my God. So, did you say this? You didn't say this on, on the uh, show, did you? Did I say this there, Matt? Yeah, who, I don't what think is it? so. What's the Basically, story? Chris Rock was like this funny guy, great writer. You know, he had a little stint on SNL, so he's getting some heat, but he's a comic at heart. He's on the road. He's like, ah, I should do more black rooms. This guy opens for him, blows him off stage. Yeah. Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence, a yeah. young Martin Lawrence. And he was like, oh, my God, I can't follow this. And then he he like changed his life where he's like, I got to start walking around. That's where all that shit came from, like pacing wow. the stage because he was like, I have to move. Rock had a little Sam Kinison in him. Oh, he that loves like kind of holding the room and that that booming voice. Totally. You know? Although you see Rock at a comedy club, he's just kind of talking the bits out. But yeah, yeah. It's funny that like you know what's the worst thing about drinking is you're with your friend and you're like he's already told me this story. We literally built the podcast around that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a speaking show, and I'm like, I think I've told Mark this. I can't. And then you tell yeah. me like, we definitely did. Right. But, uh, you, they'll forgive us at home for this. Please tell me what I've told you. Cause you I, back at you because I do it okay, too. Okay, we yeah. both do it. It's embarrassing because I've been hanging out with guys and I'm like, ah, you But it's told my fault too because I'm like, I don't remember until halfway through right, sometimes. Right, right. But I told you that on here? Yeah. Oh, shit. It, was, it might have been a Patreon. All right, all right. Well, if we got. I mean, good. look, guys, it's like you can't win. It's like some people are mad we're not drunk enough. Other people yeah. are mad we repeat. What are you going to do? Yeah, it's kind of adorable. My, my girlfriend has a pod now and she's like, I'm getting all this. Uh, uh, these mean comments. I'm like, woo, buckle up, wow. bitch. It's about to get way worse. This is <laughs> this is just the the, the beginning. I <laughs> you called her a bitch. <laughs> That's the name buckle of the pod. Buckle up, whore. <laughs> it's a pod about driving called Buckle Up, Bitch. And uh, yeah, you just start speaking in common. You're like another unfunny woman. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so she's like, this guy was kind of mean to me. Just, I'm like, are you kidding? And I'm, yeah, oh I, my I god, pull out a scroll. I got like, a great one today that I had to post because it was like, uh, 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 another hetero man 
Uh, well, let me wait, let me read it because I had to screenshot it. Made me, <laughs> some of these make me laugh. Like, of fucking... course, it's so funny that we've gone so far, like, uh, progressive that it becomes now you're judging me based on my skin, my sexual orientation, my, you know, all this shit. And you're like, what are we doing? Now you're I, just it was back a there. clip of me bombing on morning TV, which I think are always funny. Yeah. So uh, I posted on TikTok. It does a shitload of views on TikTok. Oh, and, yeah. But then, you know, you get the people. I always like to lead in with, like, bombing. So people are like, if it's positive, they're like, you're not bombing. Uh, but if it's bad, they're like, yeah, you fucking, yeah, you're bombing. Right, you stink. Right. So this guy Smart. writes, ah, yes, the forgettable experiences of a white hetero, hetero man is comedy. Uh, I thought that's what we did here. I thought we were observational comedians. I know. I thought I know. that was making the mundane funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's psychos everywhere. And oh, but gonna... it's kind of, I kind of enjoy it. I think oh, it's really? funny. I, I don't look for it, but every once in a while I'm like, let me see. And I'm like, oh, it's kind of funny. I should enjoy it more, but I, 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 I. It's ridiculous. How do you not? It is, yeah. I don't know. But that guy's walking the streets and you could bump in him at Whole Foods and, and be like, oh, sorry, man. He's like, oh, no problem. Then he goes home. He's like, white hetero man. <laughs> That's well, what like, bugs me. What is, does he need every story to be like, and that was uh, and that was one about slavery. And you're like, well, does everything have to be murderous and I know. horrible? And I agree. I agree. I'm with you. Not everything has to be about, not all comedy has to be about someone's plight. Some There's escapist comedy. <laughs> of course. I mean, Nate Bargatze is doing very well on Netflix and he sells out everywhere. I think we're we're kind of craving a little bit of just like, well, not everyone's comedy is for everybody. Well, that too, that too. But we got in this weird thing where, I don't know, the world's all fucked up, but like Ted Bundy's got a doc, and then we got to have another doc about Dahmer, like the 15th. Do- we love murder now. We, we always loved it, but now it's like so in type. True crime is, is bigger than ever. What do like, you think it is? Why? Michael Jackson's got to have a documentary. Like, we know he fucked kids. Do we need to like have the scene where the guy's butthole gets opened up and all well, that shit? Well, they know it's going to get a lot of eyeballs because it's Michael Jackson. So yeah. that's, for that one, that's it's obvious when they made that. And also, it's like, there are those people who are like, well, I love Michael Jackson, but let me see uh, how I feel about this. It's, it's Those are tough with Michael Jackson because we're complicit. Right, because right. that's why it takes so long to turn on people like that. Because yeah. it's like we all fucking love his music. Yeah, I mean, I still hear it at Target. You oh know? my god, I heard like Billy Jean the other day, and yeah. I was like, "It's a good song, man. Great song. I mean, the guy's talented. You beat can beat it. You I can mean... beat two things. Yeah, beat it. Yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's just weird because like we like craved it for a while, and it was almost kind of like I felt like we were going very. We got to love everybody and body positivity and don't yeah. shame. So then you almost have to like even it out with, uh, hey, here's a pedophile. Let's all hate him. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It is. I do feel guilty watching it sometimes because it's like you forget that they're real people. Oh, for I'm sure. literally watching like a Dateline episode and her body was never discovered. I'm like, pass the pad tie, <laughs> you know, we're so disconnected from it. Completely. I mean, that's all social media is like you fucking cuck bitch. And you're like. My mom might see this. You know, you psycho, <laughs> relax. What's the beef? I'm a it, human being. It's it's weird. Like, those murder docs are, like, they are addictive, too. Because yeah. I think part of it is, like, we all in our heart, like, want to be part of, like, there's something so satisfying about piecing something together, too. Uh, I think that's why people love the forensic files. Is like, all love right, well, it. Well, like, that, they use science to solve a murder so like they, yeah it, that's cool it's like in the end there's justice like that but then you have like ones like unsolved mis- yeah and that, that i don't love i don't like it you get no closure no closure i want an orgasm at the end i want that <laughs> uh that dead body to jizz on <laughs> it is it is it's fucking without coming it is yeah. yeah yeah where'd the condom go i don't know but yeah i don't like that i wanted to i want to have the the button on it so, it's fucking. Yeah. It's fucking without coming because uh, there's a less life. Ah, there we go. Yeah. I like it. But write it down. Write it down. That could be something. Ah. But uh, <laughs> dude, I love the. Uh, although I do, there are some unsolved ones like shit. You know, it was a pretty good one on HBO. Murder at uh, Middle Beach. Is that what loved it was called? It. Loved it. That was good because. We don't need to know it. Like, if the journey is that incredible. Right, right. I don't really care about the ending because you learn so much about him and his struggle. Yeah. And Made by the Sun 
who lost the parent. He lost his mother, and there were some weird parts of that. Though. Oh, the whole Ponzi scheme part was so weird. weird. Right. And also, there was a part where uh, this old lady next door was like, "I saw a gentleman enter the house in a ski mask." I'm like, first off, maybe we shouldn't refer to him as a gentleman. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's uh, exactly what happened. But uh, the fact that there were like a lot of red flags like that, where like you just saw a dude enter in a ski mask, right? It seemed very clearly to be the dad. I have. Felt like that. If you're just like video, if every time you bring it up, you're like, he's like, so who murdered mom? He's like, I thought we were having a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I you're know. Like, you can't just. There are people like that though. Like, don't you find that like when you talk, try to talk about like really heavy stuff with your dad, that it's oh, it's it's hard. It ain't easy. But what, if it's a murder, I feel like you should at least be able to ask once. Yeah. <laughs> if your mom got it. murdered, you know. Yeah, you got to bring it up. Yeah. It's a, it's a big matzo ball hanging out there. So I, I get it. But man, that is uh heavy stuff cuz it's also you got to remember there's cameras and lights in the living room. So it's not just like, "Hey dad, what's up with this?" or "Hey mom, what's going on here?" It's like, "Hey, here's my crew. Uh we're going to put a little makeup on you." Okay, where's mom? <laughs> you know, it's a, it's kind of a lot with production there. It we is forget a lot. about that. It is a lot. Yeah, but he was going like secret Mike in that shit. Like he was showing up. Yeah, you know, that's like true. with the camera guy outside, mic'd up. Like you're wearing a wire against your dad. Ah, uh, isn't that crazy? I mean, that's got to be fucked up. Just to even even if you don't think he did it, but there's a possibility that yeah. kind of that's got to fuck your life up a little bit. So you know, Jason Katz, my buddy. I think he filmed your special. He directed. I got this. Yeah, there I you love go. Jason, yeah, great guy. So I'm this. This is this is a little nugget about me. I'm so disconnected with my parents, and my dad is having some health issues. So I asked Jason, in like a sad text, to interview my parents about me. So when they die, I'm gonna watch it. Wow! How fucked up is that? You I've never told it. anybody. You can't that. just ask him, like what? Ask why, them? Yeah. Why can't you just? I mean, I understand videotaping it for when they move on or whatever, but you don't want to. You don't want to just be like, "What do you think of my comedy?" Ah, it's too weird. Is it beyond your comedy, or is it most? It's yeah. It's everything. It's the whole life. It's the the whole relationship. And nothing happened. I wasn't diddled or anything, no, but it's just but uh, that, that's would, how... that stresses me out just hearing it. Well, I feel in my weird, twisted logic, I'm like, this is, I'll get something out of this. This is a this is a move in the right direction. Is it going to, uh, in any way, play into the eulogy? Are you going to watch it before you eulogize him? Nah, nah. I'll probably watch it in like thirty years. Really? Yeah. Sit on it for a while. Let it build some interest. Really? Yeah. I don't want to. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'll never watch it. I, I definitely know. think like it is weird. Like dads of that generation are not. I mean, look, we're probably. It's probably like they're too closed off, and we might be too open. I think that might be uh, the problem. We I, have to be open just to. It's our overcompensation. But it's our generation too. I mean, it's like they don't like. We're like we're the TikTok generation. Sure. You know, of sure. like of these kids who are just like. I mean, maybe we're a little older than that, but like those people just literally on like, so I was thinking about this the other yeah, day and you're like, yeah. how much more, it's only going to move more forward. I know. Like how forward is it going to be? It's literally going to be like a kid spread ego, like here are my balls <laughs> and uh, I think they're weird, you yeah. know? Yeah. What do you think? Send me photos of your balls and we can compare. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's going to go there. But I just think about, you know, like there is... It is tough. Like I, I love my dad, but I definitely feel like yeah, there, there's a there's a there's a wall. There's a wall. I think sure. of just people of his generation. Like I don't even blame him. Like yeah. I think there was a much bigger wall with his dad. So for him to be where he is, yes, is is huge. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, my dad's got the most fucked up childhood. So I don't I don't fault him. I don't blame him. Uh, military guy, uh, tortured weirdo guy. So like. Tortured in the military? No, no, as a kid. Oh, the, geez. The you back put those back to back. I was like, was your fucking dad McCain? <laughs> what the he hell? He was waterboarded. Jesus Christ. It, yeah, no, he... Uh... The waterboard was nothing compared to this video he's got to make for his son. <laughs> I know, I know. Brutal. Exactly. He's going to hate it. But yeah. uh, my mom texted me like, do you know this guy, Jason? I was like, oh, yeah, I probably should have prepped you. That some you guy... didn't prep them? I didn't want to text him. That's a whole other you thing. Hate con you hate... Interaction. Any... You hate any confrontation, probably more than anyone I've ever met, because I, I don't do. like it, but you hate it so much more it, than me. I hate it, I hate it, yeah. I uh, feel like I, 
I really don't like it, but I will do it. Yeah, you'll do it. You'll I'll do, do it. it, but you really like you just can't do it. Why is that? I don't know. I think. Well, if you, I mean, this is getting into a what is this? Uh, Oprah here. But, uh, well, you're interesting. You're an interesting guy. Well, I think it's because my dad was, he had like a short fuse. Like he would just turn like, well, you know, you're petting a cat and you're like, oh, this is fun. And the cat's like, <laughs> my dad was like that. You know, like we were like, whoa. And it was so scary as a as a little kid that uh, I just don't want to don't want to wake the beast yeah the worst part was his urine that was when I got really... <laughs> yeah, I no it's uh... on my couch to, to market <laughs> dude i i can't believe i mean i think a lot my dad was like my parents didn't hit me like the, i've said this on the pod before but like as bad as the guy was like the wrist grab and you're like ah, oh, I hate you the know? wrist grab. you're I... hurting me <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no he my parents were all about like we were very disappointed it's like oh, very yeah. very white liberal uh which also stings the disappointed is worse than like come on you piece of shit get in your room the oh, disappointed yeah. you're like oh man i gotta get my <laughs> shit together <laughs> but uh, yeah I'm, I'm fascinated like yeah i get it like you're scared I mean, we all have that thing with comics. We're like, look, let's be real. Any entertainer has that need oh, to be yeah. liked. Sure, you know, you, sure. You have that thing where you're like, I need it so bad. I need. It's so weird to me that like people will say things to me like, "You're." It's amazing what you do to be on stage, and I'm just like, no, it's amazing what you do to be a well-adjusted person. I know the stage is easy. Being being a normal well-adjusted member of society takes so much more work yeah yeah you're in a cubicle all day dealing with other people all day answering phones talking to people uh it's a nightmare i'm so much more comfortable on stage than i am at like a social gathering oh yeah that's one way one place we bond well also the stage there's no stakes really if you bomb it's kind of like i'll i'll bounce back yeah if you bomb socially that just lingers yes. and is something that's going to be talked about for such a long period of time but it does say something weird about us that we have like there's something about being a comic that i think is like we're saying what we felt we weren't allowed to say yes like growing yes. up we couldn't say this to our family so we're more comfortable saying this to, to strangers, strangers you know so but the social thing is tough because you're you bomb socially they're like this guy's weird this yeah. guy's off this guy's an idiot you bomb on stage it's like he had a bad set it's not really you yes. as a human being, as a person. So you can walk away going, ah, I tried some new. I fucked it up. I riffed something stupid. I said it wasn't funny. I'll go do it again tomorrow. But the, the party, you bomb at the party or with your girlfriend's parents or whatever the <laughs> hell it is. Woo! They go, this guy's unfit. This guy's unwell. This yeah. guy's a little nutty. And you need new friends. You need new friends. You yeah. get a new crowd. I need a new group of friends. Completely. If I bomb for those friends. You got to move out of town. I left New Orleans and I was like, oh, I got to get out of here. You know, just go to a new place, new people. You had one bad dinner. You're like, New York. <laughs> yeah, I got a one way ticket. It's true. Yeah. Like, you still live here. You're around all your high school, all your Isn't, family. It's weird. Yeah. It is. I can't imagine. It's weird. Um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, there's those people like, Time is like the thing I don't you can't get back. Like time sure. is everything to me now because I, I have very little free time now mm. because I, I'm on the road every weekend. Mm -hmm. So then I have like three days here a week usually. Yeah, same. One of them is usually like panicking about leaving the next day yes. and like getting all my shit in order, maybe laundry or like packing. You ever heard and that Palisac joke? What's his joke? Great Palace Michael Palisac. Check him out. He has yeah. this joke. He he's goes, like West Coast Phil Hanley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> handsome. He's cute. He has this great joke. He's like, ah, oh, God, I'm so stressed out. I got a 6 a.m. flight in two weeks. Oh, and you're like, that sums perfect. up my whole personality. Damn, that's a great comedy joke. Great line, yeah. Flight in two weeks. Two weeks. It's yeah. so true. You just It consumes you. You're like, oh, shit. I got some sleep tonight, but in two weeks, I'm fucked. I had to wake up for a doctor's appointment this morning at like 7.30 a.m. Ah! And it's just like, if I wake up at 7.30 in the morning, like... You can't complain about that to a normal person, but to a comic, they're like, oh, you, because they, comics just get that we're like, yeah, I go to bed at three no matter what. Yes, exactly. Like, there's no way around that. No way around. It's so funny. I, I'm a 3 a.m. man myself. And that's me like, go, I got to go to bed now. It's 2.30. Put yourself in bed. And the anxiety keeps kicking up every 30 minutes or so. Yeah. You're like, fuck, <laughs> my heart beats faster and faster. Yeah. I do a lot of like every hour I wake up to piss and mm -hmm. I'm just like, God. People, old people are always like, wait till you get older. I'm like, how much more can I piss? <laughs> I know, right? You do pee a lot. I had to stretch the bladder as a kid. I was a bedwetter. So my, 
I had two fucking my dad again, old school. No more drinks after six. So after six p.m., I was off liquid in New Orleans. That heat. Yes. And then two was uh oh when you have to pee, he's like, I'm not gonna let you go because I want you to stretch the bladder. So that's like when the parents make the baby cry yeah. and they don't help, and they're like, for your own good. They oh, did yeah. that with your fucking penis. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it was tough. But we'd play Edward Forty Hands. Did you play that in college? What is that? Edward oh, Forty Hands. Oh, you, 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 you tape the 40s to your hands. Two 40s to your yeah. hand, so you can't pee because you can't gonna do your zipper. Obviously, you got two 40s in your hand. So you had to drink them. And I would kill that every time because I had the stretchiest bladder in, in Louisiana. So that's why you don't pee as I think is, yeah, that, I think is so. that a thing that Could you can that stretch work? your bladder? Matt, can you fact check that if that's an actual... That feels like people who are like, I can get my dick bigger if I just pull it out. <laughs> it's like the same. It feels like the same. I truth. tried that too. <laughs> I tried all that rolling it out, hanging the weights. I you tried took everything. one of those ab rollers yeah. and just fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The. Yeah, you, hey, can. you can. Damn, I should try. I got a crazy. You bladder. can't do that if you're a woman, though. You get a U. Oh, I've had a few of those though. Yeah. Oh, you had yeah. UTIs. Many UTIs. I didn't know dudes could get them. What are you kidding? Oh my god! Yeah. They, uh, but they're not as common in men. No, they, no, 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 no. But they you come never, and go. You, I've never heard of a man like pulling out of that right after sex, being like, "I gotta pee." <laughs> it's an emergency. I would do that just in in uh, just to be cautious. But you know, Doctor Steve. I know who he is. I've never oh, met him. If you ever want his number, good guy. If you need a, need a hand downtown. Really? But, uh, oh yeah. Always inspected your garbage. Always inspecting. If I, I got know, I call it your garbage. They they say your junk, but your garbage sounds a little more That's aggressive. That's true. It does sound worse. Your, your junk is fine. Yeah. Your garbage. <laughs> this is a landfill. I guess because junk can still have value. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, that's big. I don't yes, know. garbage is just garbage. It's ruined. Yeah, I picture a banana peel and a fish bone. Yeah, but junk could be like an old record player. Yeah, it's like a like a little you know flea sale, flea market, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Good garage point. sale. Garbage is no good, but yeah. Uh, so I forgot my point. You 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 see the doctor? Oh, oh, he touches doctor. Your, your penis. He would he he was on speed dial. Like oh, I got a UTI. He's like CVS. Go get it. I I called it in. You know what's funny with all this telehealth stuff and you're like doing doctor's appointments on Zoom and shit. Like you're really doing the same shit as a cam girl, mm. except you're paying them. Wait, what do you mean? Well, you're whipping your dick out on a fucking camera. Oh yeah. Except yeah. it's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. We got to pay people to look at our dick. Yeah. <laughs> they get to get paid. Yeah. I know like three chicks who failed in comedy and now they're killing it on OnlyFans. Yeah, but that's a, it's a short lived. Sure, sure. It's a short lived career on that. I guess so. But I mean, it's like, you, you... <laughs> it'd be nice to get, you it'd know, be 20K. Really? I mean, I, I mean, look, I got You're nothing. doing pretty well on the road. No, I'm just saying, if if things got weird, wouldn't it be, it'd be more, nice. Don't, wouldn't you be more satisfied being like, did you hear the new Norman bit? Being like, check out Mark's dick. <laughs> the joke is more satisfying. Of course, I agree, I agree. But let's just say we weren't funny. Then it'd be nice to be able... There's no fallback. I could be a garbage man. How long could you do... How long could you do that for realistically, though? The OnlyFans thing. I don't know, but I think when a 20K check comes in a month, you're like, meh. It's weird. You want to be recognized for your comedy. I don't think you want to be recognized in the street because you're like, oh, I've seen your dick before. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. By the way, if you're calling it garbage, a garbage man could be a gay guy. Ooh. Uh-huh. There we go. That's the guy, that guy loves junk. Garbage man. Yeah, he collects. Yeah. Just like a garbage man. What was that smell? By the way, when I was a kid, everybody would be like, garbage man. Get paid a lot. And you go, wow, well, we're really. And then you hear and you're like, not nearly enough. Not enough. For that That is a thankless job, especially in New York. You know how many rats they're probably pulling oh, out of there? Oh, my God. That's you're a, right. That's a thankless job. The hours are shit. Yeah. You you smell like you shit smell. probably from it. Garbage. Yeah. Shout out to garbage men. Dude. That's a tough ass job. And you're up real. at the crack of gin. I mean, how many times yeah. have you been drinking? And you're like, oh, the garbage men are out. We better go home. I think they always. I don't know. I I heard that a lot growing up too. They'd be like, garbage men make a lot of money. But then then you hear and you're like, can we get can we get a number on that? What? That's, that's it? not enough in New York. Oh, that's low. You're keeping this city clean. Yeah, Ish. yeah. It's, it's not that real. Something. Sure, but. That night, what is it, Monday or Tuesday night, when all the garbage is on the corner, you're like, ooh, this is a gross. That's like, it's like Frogger, but with rats. You're just having yes. to, like, get through all these. Oh, the amount the of rats. It's You know, when you have, you know, I have a West Coast girlfriend who, when she comes here, 
I have to be like, it's like New York is like a shitty roommate. Yeah. That I'm just like hoping will behave. Ah, uh, that's great. It's literally like. Is that a bit? No, but it could be. This probably. is gold. Yeah. But it's like, it literally is like rats, like homeless dudes with their yeah, dicks out. Yeah. We got in a subway car the other day. And I'm just like, ah, nice air conditioned subway car, right? She's like, eh. Then we turn to the left. <laughs> I'm trying, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's just a fucking pile of human shit. Uh, <laughs> and I have to be like, oh, let's go. I just like, right before she could look, I was like, oh, let's go this way. Over oh, here, let's sit over that's here. Great. It's like you're the divorced dad with your shitty apartment. Like, no, it's fun. It's fun. It's a, <laughs> it's a dead body. Play with it. Hit it with a stick. <laughs> Damn, that's, yeah, you're right. That's so true. New you York is. I love it so much, but it's like, if you don't love it, you can't argue with it. No. Like, it's insane. I mean, every time an L.A. comic trashes New York, they all, they always do it. It's kind of hack at this point, yeah. but they come to New York and they have to live here to shoot the Daily Show or whatever. And they're like, New York sucks. $18, $18 for a smoothie, the subway, the this, the that. And you're like, oh, yeah, it does. That is shitty. And then you see their act and you're like. Well, there's a reason we live here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, but they're right. There's a no. They are. There's a point. I, I get it. The quality of life is better in L.A. Oh, but, yeah. But New York comics get up more. They're better at literally everything else. They're better actors. They're better. Yeah, yeah. They're in better shape. They look better. <laughs> they, they're healthier. They uh, they'll probably live longer. Yeah, they sleep better. The industry's all out there. I right, get it. Like, right. I get why you're out there. I if, mean, look, Larry David moved out there. A lot of New York. Born and raised. Moved Seinfeld there. stayed here. You got that right. But also, don't you feel like Larry's energy is like constantly, he's like in a constant state of irritation. So that, that energy kind of works anywhere. He'd yeah, be annoyed course. in Brooklyn. He'd be annoyed in Manhattan. <laughs> he's like, I'll live in LA. I'll be annoyed. Yes. And him in LA is a sore thumb. And it's it's great for comedy. Oh, dude. The episode of Curb where he accidentally tripped Shaq. And they're like, oh. there's, there's reports that he's a Knicks fan and he did it on purpose. Yes. Yes. That's I mean, one of the. Low key, great, great. Uh, I hate when I, I hate when people say low key. That's one of the all time best episodes. Yeah, yeah. It's a real sleeper. It. It's a real one. sleeper. <laughs> sleeper app, or my girlfriend goes, it's a sneaky great app. You're like, it's sneaky, not sneaky. Great. It's a great app. What sneaky. do you mean? <laughs> Like like the episodes like that Greer Barnes bit what, when he's sneaking on the train. Oh yeah, yeah. Suspicious packages, <laughs> like the package he acts it out. Oh, that's funny. Damn, um, dude, he'd be a good guest on this once we start doing oh, guests. Yeah, that's a great. Remember idea. that all nighter we pulled with him. Back at Ellie's apartment, back like ten years ago. Was that eighty-eight. Jesus <laughs> Christ! I still have photos. Might of that have been night. eleven years ago. Yeah, we did the strip. Well, Christmas maybe twelve party. years ago, dude. Wow, it might be. Yeah, it was you, me, Phil, Greer Barnes. We we just all night, and I remember we were going through like bottles of whiskey, and I remember we were hammered, and Greer was fine. Yeah, he was telling stories, and we're all like. We're like stumbling, and he and he was just like, I was like, oh, this dude can drink. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is this is a pro with a few amateurs here. Yeah, you were dating like a real kind of Manhattanite gal. She was real cool, man. Cool I, as I, shit. I went to a gallery the uh, like during the pandemic. We did a show on like a. She we did one of the roof shows. Yeah, uh, Phil and I did one there. Wait, at her she has a gallery. She is a gallery in like Chinatown. It's a tiny oh, little gallery. Yeah, it's great. That's like yeah. a rom com, like a Woody <laughs> Allen movie. But she was she had like. She Hot loved friends. you. Yeah. Oh, I, she was great, and she was had a great apartment, like upper well, it was, east side. It was her mom's apartment. Oh, okay. But that was my first taste of like, because I was so young then. I was probably like twenty five or something. We were kids. This is amazing. This, it was all new to me, like a balcony in Manhattan. What the fuck? She didn't have a balcony. All right. Well, it was <laughs> like a, big a one window. bedroom in Manhattan. Well, it looked huge to me. It I was, lived in it Crown was a, Heights. It was a nice building. It was yeah, a nice, building. very nice doorman, all yeah. that shit. Now, I'm, you know, you were this New York Jewish comedian. I was like the whole thing was very foreign to me. It was we, fascinating. We were hanging on the Upper East. We were doing. We were hanging at the Strip. Yeah. Yeah, I remember she'd have like parties. And oh stuff my god, and they it were was, fun. Like, bar cart, and it was very like beautiful apartment, like a... good architecture. Great bar cart, and she put music on. I was like, "This is high society." Dude, then we black out. <laughs> she put on music on. Yeah, well, how low was, was your bar? It was like Billy, holy shit, uh, music. What was it? What's that name? It was like a uh, Nat King Cole or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, no, you know? she would play good tunes. Yeah, yeah. we. Uh, there's something about. Getting drunk to like jazz that just oh, makes you, yeah. it makes you feel like you're it's like a higher class of drunk totally and it's the up, upper east side it was cold out I mean this is all nothing I've done I, we didn't have winter in New Orleans so it was all very new to me it was so fascinating a lot of you guys if you watch this on YouTube we're doing a lot of like kind of summery drinks it's it's hot as fuck outside oh it's brutal in the winter I'm kind of pumped to do some like maybe some peaty scotches maybe we'll get some like Ardbeg in the mix. 
right? We'll do. We'll I love do, it. We'll do it up, but maybe we'll have fat cap by then. Maybe yes. we'll have a ride by then. Good call. I I do need it to get cold. I'm not a fan of the summer. I hate the heat. Really? Yeah. People like go. You're we from were Louisiana. Southern. I don't. Yeah. Why do you hate the heat? Well, I still, you know, I hate my dad too. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from. Joking, Dad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had, a, we had a breakthrough in this episode, Dan. You can't just turn on him. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm just worried about the guys getting old. But uh, I I hate the heat. I can't, like, my, I don't know, my atoms are moving too fast in my body. It's too much, you know? Like, look at all the uh, the hot places. They're all at at war. You know, like Coldplay. Well, I guess Russia's fucking psycho, too. I, I take it all back. They went out like G's, too. What do you mean? Oh, man, those World War II battles. I feel like they oh. always lost the most men. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Oh. I watched all those documentaries. The the dudes putting their feet on the fire just because they're so cold. Like, their foot is in the fire. I'm yeah. like, we bitch about everything. These guys were out there for, like, you know, six years or whatever. It's crazy. There's stories when they would get, like, they would have to go cannibal when they'd be oh. so starved. They would, like, Man. talk about how, like, the butt has the meatiest, uh, me- or just, yeah. like, weed. So they literally ate butt. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But, we, I mean, that's, that's like. a good point. That's fucking brutal. 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 And they would eat those MREs, and, like, a cigarette was a treat. Like, oh, I got a cigarette. You know, just what a nightmare. Like, the rats, the trenches, the cold. We complain about AC. I know. I know. Got to change the filter. Here we go. No, you should see the complaints. I mean, like, you think about it sometimes. I'm like, our Wi-Fi goes out for one fucking minute. These yeah. people are like, ugh. And they don't living talk. Living in ab- debris. Yeah, they don't talk about the war either, which also I think kind of hurts their cause. Because I feel like, you know, if someone's like, I was triggered and I, I, I don't, I didn't, I felt threatened. You're like, okay, let's hear it. But these guys didn't talk about it, so they don't get the love either. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. It's like, it's all about, like... You just kind of li- those people talk the least. Yes, it's literally like grandkids, like uh, grandpa. Do you want to do my podcast? <laughs> and they're like, oh, I don't. It's kind of painful for me to talk. It's like, well, on my podcast, we try to be real. So, right, right, exactly. Uh, you know, I would talk about the war if I was in the war, but that's yeah. cool that you. Yeah, but they they can't articulate. I get why they don't talk about it because imagine trying to be like, okay, here we did this, or like, oh yeah, I've been I've been skiing. I get the cold. Like now you don't get it. They've shell shocked. Yeah, so uh, I wouldn't talk about it either. Go. Another week you haven't watched Rick and Morty. We gotta, uh, we're going to get you on it. This is the week. This is the week. Yeah. Going to Martha's Vineyard next week. What? Any A show or just a vacay? Just a vacay. The lady has a has a pad out there, so I'm, we're going to go. I've never been. I've never uh, been either. I'm not a beach guy, but I'm going to get a bicycle. We're, both not be- we're, we're very similar in a lot of ways. I'm not, I hate the beach. I don't get it. I, sit I don't hate there. it, but I just like... I'd rather sit in a bar with with a with, a, with music and a and a and a bartender sweeping up and you know. I think we're trash. I mean, like maybe I think like it's classy to like the beach, and I think like I'm always kind of like I like like a poolside, like yeah. a, a hotel, like a poolside. I'll do poolside. All yeah. I mean, look, there's some trash on the beach. Don't oh, don't yeah, get me wrong. For sure. So the beach is cheap. So I think there is a lot of like poor people go to the beach and and fucking bring speakers and live it up. True. So the beach can go either way, but then you got the Hamptons. The beach has a lot of range. Not big on sand is like a real deal breaker for me. I, know I don't. Saying. I don't get it. You just it ruins you. You, you ruins the bathing suit. You got to shake everything out. Yeah, it sticks to you. Yeah, you got to deal with jellyfish. You got to deal yes. with like it's constant sun. Then you're sweaty and you're kind of burny. Sanders and it's just it's too much you are pink by the end but (laughs) no it's it's dude it's I'll go I'm not I'm not so hard against it if someone's like really passionate about it I'm like all right I'll go I mean I was in AC a few weeks ago and DeVito was there with his girlfriend Mm. and she was like very much like we need to go to the beach and luckily I was in too much pain to even get out of the hotel Uh, but they got like a banner or something oh good good but that sounds it sounded fun if I was up to it I would have gone yeah but it it's i guess it could be i mean you get a book yeah. and you just sit in a towel it's kind of nice sure sure but i feel like you could do that on a terrace or in a backyard but I, do you get in the water not at the beach oh well there you go how about you i do just because i'm like it's there i gotta do it but i don't know unless i'm surfing or boogie boarding do you surf i've never done it i would love to try it yeah it looks fun yeah but i never had a good wave i mean i think i think you gotta like learn it i think yeah uh, yeah I think you're right. But, it, yeah, it just always looks like, 
I don't know. Yeah, something. I need something to do. I just end up getting shit faced because I'm like, I need a drink, or I'm just sitting here. I don't know what to do. Yeah, you know what I think looks like cool vacation wise is like a poolside bar mm. where you just like swim up and they hand you like a a vodka. Now or something. you're talking. That looks fun. That looks great. Yeah, and there's a cool, <laughs> charming bartender. We work our vacations around the bar. Of I course, think. of yeah. course. Yeah, well, I, I'm on vacation to turn it off, so I need the the alcohol to like shut me down. Or else I'm like, I should be tweeting, I should be uh, Instagramming, I should be potting, you know? Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Like, we, we, there's something about, it's so hard for us to, we, we, we work for so long to get to a point where, like, my ADD is so bad, stand up, it took so long to get to a, a comfortable and, like, safe place with stand up yeah. that it's hard you're like what am i just supposed to shut down yes now? yes you you, you love it's almost like a kid like we work so hard to get you into college and we finally are you're, you're a good kid and you're smart and you're uh accomplished i can't just leave you yeah you know we 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 built this thing up to something it's like a like a restaurant like find the restaurants in the black and what do you am i just gonna go go leave it no i gotta stick with it yeah it's tough right it's a business it is tough uh yeah yeah, like the, that's why booze will never be illegal. Look, booze kills people all the time. <laughs> uh, drunk driving, you know, uh, domestic abuse. It's horrible for people, but it takes the edge off. Yeah. We need it. We need a drink every now and then. I, that's I know a great we point. do. That, maybe that's a bit. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, think about that like murder, violence, drunk driving. You're like, but it makes you comfortable on the first date. Yeah, yeah. It I keeps mean, the world lubricated <laughs> in a way, you know? Like a lot Lube of, is always good. Lube is good. Social it, lube. Engine lube. Yeah, all that Actual shit. Actual lube. Yeah. Sexual yeah. lube. Sex lube. Have you ever done lube? Have I done it? Have you used lube with of your course. lady? Yeah, of course. Oh, my God. Well, you have to. It's a game changer. What, am I a superhero? <laughs> I don't try try not to use it because it's too good. It's almost like doing blow or something. Really? Where I'm like, I don't want to need this all the time. Sure, sure. But, you want to earn it. It does yeah. feel better if you if you earn. And my gal's a real gusher. I mean, she's squirting out all kinds of stuff. So mine's more of a fruit roll up. <laughs> I thought we were just doing candy. I don't know. Ah. But uh, no, I, I know what you mean though. It, it, but lube, you gotta get the naturals. Mm. You don't want to get that KY jelly. Sh- well, what's the natural? It's just any kind that's, like, not chemical. Oh, okay. You don't want to, like, because, you know, I just think the natural is, like, safer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on that. Because they have all these weird ones where it's, like, warming, massaging yeah, fluid. You're yeah, like, I yeah, don't yeah. trust any of this shit. I don't like that at all. No, yeah. I'm with you. But lube, it you is end a... end up with an itchy dick. <laughs> itchy dick. <laughs> that's a great term. That sounds like a Carlin thing. End up with an itchy dick. But uh, Andy Dick's brother, by the way. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's uh, lube great is, on news radio. <laughs> it, lube is great, but it it does take a second where you're like, hold on, let me get the lube, and that kind of can kill. It takes the moment. you out of it a little bit. It takes yeah. you out of and it. If you have too many things in yes, the bedroom, yes, you can have too many accessories. Completely, yeah. That's why the condom. That's why it's great being in a relationship because that condom was a whole thing. It's almost like when you're having a cocktail and you take out the shaker and the stir, and sometimes you're like, I just need the drink. Yes, exactly. You can deal with this stuff later, but that's kind of what it all is. You're kind of mm-hmm. like, all right, I'm out. Of, I, I'm. I. I have the need yeah. to do it right now. Right. Right. Maybe there'll be a lubeologist. You know, there's a mixologist who's like, so he like makes a thing out of it. There'll be a lube. Put on your dick. You're like olives. Crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I gotta do a wreck or a peeve Maybe with or a something. Wreck or a peeve or something. I got, I got some peeve. Oh baby. All right. By the way, look at this. Hold on. My moon is on. Oh, it worked. Calls and notifications will be silenced. Isn't that nice? This is my first time. Yeah, I love it. Man, you busted your cherry, but I'll tell you, man, it's it's nice. I think it's I think, Matt. Would you ever do the? Do you do the? Do not disturb. You do. Oh shit. It keeps, it, Occasionally, you miss important calls here and there, but like they either call back or like it's worth it for the overall just kind of peace. Yeah. Because otherwise, your phone is vibrating with like push notifications and like oh, yeah. it's like CNN, Huffington Post, Ugh. you know, my mom, you know, it's just right, right. The last one was a joke, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I believed you. <laughs> but it's I mean, all news. I know, but I wouldn't ignore her, you know. But it's it's it does add up to a point where you're like, I just like to bang this all out. My thing is like. If it's really important, call me. Right. And I'll call you back. Right. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. do the texting all day, and you get stuck in doing the texting all day, mm. and you just can't do other shit. Yeah, no, I'm here with you. 
Last thing I'll say about booze. You know, I, I, I listened to some podcast where a historian was talking about booze. It kept people alive for years. Yeah. Because you couldn't drink water because it was too dirty. So they drank alcohol because it would kill the germs. So kids would drink cider and shit at breakfast. So isn't that kind of fun that booze kept people hydrated? And but, then, then, but, but booze dehydrates. I know, but you would it, the beer was like considered like a cat. It was almost like a protein shake. Like we gotta have a beer break and and keep farming. Wow. Yeah. What well, is calories. beer is refreshing, even though it dehydrates you. Like it you is. work really hard all day. Oh, you pop a cold one. Yeah. Woo! Tilt there's it. Some, there's something like you. I get happy hour. Like I get needing a drink. Definitely. You know. You ever seen uh of course you've seen Shawshank, that scene where they, they tar the roof and they have that bucket of beers with yeah. the Italian opera, you're like, Oh man, that beer looks good. Shawshank's tough not to watch. I know. Whenever if that's like it's like got that Goodfellas effect where you're like, if it's on TV, it's and it's always on TV. Like that's one where I'm on the road, I'm like, All right, I'll fucking every time I'm in the gym or something and it's on, I'm like, All right. Every I mean Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins character. Tim Robbins is is kind of underrated I, I agree he's always good uh always good. how tall is he he's i bet he's six through six four yeah i'm going i think he's a tall cup Bull of Durham, jizz. he looked pretty big yeah they, oh. if you play an athlete you got to be pretty big I think. yeah six five yeah. whoa that's a big guy yeah and he uh banging man, sarandon well he used to they're not together anymore. oh they're not no but he had you know what else he did he did what was the one um mystic river is great mm. You know what's the Robert Altman movie where he's killer? You know what I'm talking about? Uh oh. Uh, where's the agent? Agent. Oh. Robert Altman movie. Oh, right? not the the country music one. No, no. no I'm no. thinking a Prairie Home Companion. That's no, or... Woody. And what's the what's the Robert Altman one? All Just right, look up Peters. Robert Altman and and Tim Robbins will come up. The player. The player. That's a fucking great movie. Yeah, wow, I haven't heard about that movie in a while. We are brought to you by Sheath Underwear. This keeps your ball off your leg. Two pouches, one for your dick, one for your balls. Keeps the ammo separate from the gun. This is great underwear. I actually use this. This is my girlfriend's favorite underwear. This gets me laid, this underwear. Supportive, sexy looking. I really do. This is my favorite underwear. No, I'm not just saying this. I'm not just saying this because they're paying us money. I really think this is quality underwear. Agreed. Uh, the idea from Sheath came from the founder, U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton, during his second tour in Iraq. Are you guys going to support the troops or what? Support this awesome veteran-owned company whose founder, he's a big comedy fan. He's messaged me. He's a great dude. I know he's messaged you, too. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order and Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com. Promo code DRUNK, get sheath underwear, and let them support your balls. Altman, you don't hear about all, enough. The he great, did MASH. One of the greatest, yeah. Yeah. All Nash, right. Nashville might be, ah. might be, might be, I mean, that's in the conversation for best musical ever, I think. Really? I think it's fucking brilliant. Interesting. A lot, it's, of, a lot of musicals about places, Chicago, Nashville, Oklahoma. Chicago's fun. Great, great time. Never saw Oklahoma. Oh, it's it's cute, but it's campy old shit. Nashville's dark. I love it, man. Yeah, yeah. You're going there soon. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Dude, I love uh, fucking Lily Tomlin got an Oscar nod for that movie. Keith Carradine won the Oscar for best song. That's a great song. I'm wow. easy. Have yes. You seen that? That's a great song. Right? That is a great song. Man, good, good pull on Nashville. Yeah. All right, here's my dumb wreck. You did your wreck. Yeah, yeah, sideways. Oh, great, I, it's, great I, wreck. I had to rent it, but man, it's just quotable. It's worth it. I was laughing. You get touched by it. it I think everyone got nominated but Giamatti, too. It was like a what? loaded year. Yeah. Well, everyone's great in it, but like, damn, you're like, it's really his movie. Wow. But uh, yeah, just like a great, great movie. That's my favorite kind of movie. There's just that like people interacting kind of movie like social yeah what i don't know what you call it i know they call it a drama or a dramedy it's a, it's a dramedy probably but there aren't enough that get that balance right yes. where it's funny without being kind of like preachy or yes. kind of like heavy-handed right. like all the scenes that felt kind of like a little heavy i felt like they earned it uh, completely and wow, it's, well such, said. it's such a hard I, it's hard to think of other movies that 
do it that well. Yeah, and it's silly at points too. Like with the the the, the closer is so great with the fat guy running down the street naked and all that. I was dying. I, I knew it was coming. I was like, I was like, just fucking pump to watch it <laughs> the, just the idea that he runs back naked yeah and yeah and and paul giamatti's like you, like every step is like are you out of your fucking mind but at the same time you know he's thinking i chose this asshole as my friend yeah i'm yeah. his best man it's like there is that thing where you're like for better or worse i'm stuck with my fucking friends <laughs> and it's something there's something kind of beautiful about oh, that like, yeah they get you in shit you can't stand them but you love them and you still kind of got to do this yes, As, yes. i mean it's kind of just perfect so i don't it's know I'm cutting, but you tell me your reckon no that's you, you nailed the movie there uh and he's like i had my i got my cock in her ass talk about the asian lady oh man it's got silliness and it's not pretentious all right and there's like tender moments but it's also just so fucking silly like, oh yeah like the fact that he's just obsessed with the wine is such a funny trait yeah. like it's <laughs> yeah. just like because that movie could be about anything. It's not really about wine. Of course. You of know, course. but but the wine is the perfect way to get into it. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think a lot of all great movies and comedy, I think, is like that. Like, you're talking about the subway, and there's no subway in, in Cleveland or whatever, but they know what you're feeling. And I think that's the, that's the, you know, yeah, people like feeling a discomfort or. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you have to change your act when you go? You're like, no, no, people will get it. They get what I'm saying. They've been here. to New York. They've seen movies about New York. Yeah. Or they just get it. Yeah. It's, They've I've been never, on a bus. I've never had to change a New York joke. Never. A, Same here. Never. Same here. Like, you know, you go to uh, Australia or whatever, and you're like, do they have Uber here? Like, they'll get it. <laughs> they know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, all right. Now, this is cheesy. I'm a big self help, self improvement douche. And uh, one trick I learned. I want to read more. I see all these books. I have stacks of books. I order books, and I never read them. So, you know, you go, ah, I'm going to read that book. That book looks amazing, and I just let it sit there. Here's the trick. Read a page a day. You said this in another episode. I did? Yeah. No! Am I wrong? The alcohol. I think you did. All right. I got a new. I got another one. It's a one. good one, though. It is a, a, page it's a, a day. good one. Because then it, it's all Gary Goldman once had the best writing advice, and I hope I'm not just completely repeating. No, no, no. I haven't heard this. But he goes, he goes, it's hard to write. I'm like, yeah, it's hard. The getting up and sitting down and putting the pen to paper is hard. Once you're writing, it's not that bad. But the, the doing it yeah. is the hard part. Same with the gym. Getting to the yeah. gym. Woody Allen said the uh, most of life is showing up. 90% wow. of life is showing up, which is true. Once you get to the gym, you're not going to just leave. You're going to do it. So if you listen to a set, it'll help you start writing, which is a great way to you know, transition it's you painful. into it. It's painful. It is. But it's, I hate listening to myself, I hate man, it, too. But, like. Listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> no. But, no, it's I hard. hate it, but it really, uh, yeah, it's necessary. You got to do it. So that's why the page a day is good because you're like, page a day. And that's even kind of challenging. But do it on the shitter. No, do it on the train. Doing more. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's it's great advice, man. But it all really right, is. if I've done that, I've got another one. Get on. And this is going to sound weird, but get on Robin Hood. Everybody out there. What is it? That's the stock app. Oh shit! Yeah. I mean, I know nothing about stocks. I'm ignorant. I'm a I'm a I'm a douche. I'm clueless. But did you I, bail on AMC? Did you get out? I should have. Yeah. I took a real hit. It was a pump and dump. Ah, uh, somebody tweeted at me. Go on AMC. I made like three grand. And I I took it all out. But uh, boy, I took a real hit. But yeah, just get on it. Throw a couple bucks in. Have fun with it. Play with it. Invest some shit. Turn it off. Look at it again in a month. I think just try it. It's a good way for idiots like me who don't know anything about math or numbers or money to just dabble in it. It's a good way for us to get our feet, our toe in the pool. Interesting. I yeah, I never do it. Yeah, uh, that's new for me. But it's a if this app exists, and you might as well take advantage. Smart. All right. That's a that's a little tip. Yo, give me a peeve. If you got stock tips, please send them my way. <laughs> now I hope I haven't done this pee before. This is a this is kind of a heartfelt ep with wow. dad stuff. I love it, man. I think yeah. it's good. I think it's good stuff, Matt. You you gotta have these every now and then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we opened with beating up children, so I feel like that <laughs> gave us some some leeway. <laughs> but uh, peeve. 
The guy, you ever had this? The guy who texts you with a favor, which is fine. The guy you never see or talk to or hear about or sure. whatever. He's like, hey, can you do me a favor? You're like, all right, what do you got? <laughs> can, can you do me a favor? Tell me who this is first. <laughs> yeah, that's I part of it. I didn't save your number because the last two times you texted me was a favor as well. So true. I got to yeah. start saving. No, you save it as like Jeff Favor because that's all, <laughs> that's all you know him for. It's like Bonnie Big Tits, you know, or <laughs> Red Robin or whatever. So uh, Jeff hits me up. Haven't talked to this guy pre-pandemic since then. Hey, can you do me a favor? What's up, man? What's up? And then after that, I go, yeah, I got you. He goes, how are you? Oh, now are you going to pull a how are you after the favor is done? First of all, I hate the how are you because you're like, it's clearly like, oh, I should ask him about his day because he's doing me a favor. So it's so contrived, but but uh, I hate the how are you because now I got to go. Things are good, but now I got to play your dumb game, which I hate doing, just because you feel bad. Right. You don't care how I am, so that that's my peeve. Yeah, it's tough. I'm sure. It, it, I'm trying to have you know empathy for that situation. I also think I've done that before, where I've been like, uh, "Well, if you're like, how are you? You're you're a friend. We talk all the time. It's like, oh, you know, you're like, but if it's someone you don't know, that's what it is. I don't know the guy, and it's clearly like, oh, I should be polite now. It's it's so. Obvious. It's I so definitely there are people I don't see enough, and sometimes I text like "Miss you, how are you?" But yeah, I think with the favor is with different. the favor. Yeah, I think that's, that's the different. thing. That's the thing. It's it. This guy's a, a scumbag. It is tough. Yeah, it's like Ratso Rizzo and Midnight Cowboy. It feels completely forced. And, and don't hate on Ratso. That guy. He, he had a tough life though. That guy. <laughs> I mean, I like the guy. It's a great character, but I don't want to hang out with him. I'm walking here. Great, great movie. Great Talk. scene. That was great, improvised. That line. Great. Uh, great. Is he a New Yorker? Hoffman? Hoffman? He must. He must be. Give God. it a go. Man, he fucking ran the 60s. And- oh, my God. Marathon Man, The Graduate, and Bancroft from uh, the Bronx, Arthur Avenue. Gotta love that she ended up with Mel Brooks, too. I know. That's one for the comedy guys. Oh, yeah. Smoke show, sexy as hell. By the way, she was like 38 in The Graduate. I know. <laughs> that's what you, That's what a MILF was back then. Yeah. Even then they I think even then they were like, I think she's too old. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's hilarious. Yeah. But uh yeah, man, shit. Huh? Oh, you hate to hear that. Yeah, I mean LA's got good juice. That's true. That's There's true. Some good LA juice. There are some good LA juice. He really he's really just like one of the best ever. Honestly. Yeah. Such a great actor. Seems like a cool guy, funny, fun guy. In a lot of comedies, you know, he's in uh, Meet the Fockers. Tootsie. Tootsie. Yeah. Hook. Hook. Fuck. That's like a, I remember that as a kid. Yeah, he was Captain Hook. What? Okay, let me give you a peeve. Oh, hit me one. with a peeve. I got a couple. One is, okay. This has hit me hard. I think this is this is very drinkable. Yeah, it's very drinkable. I get it now. So... It fucking goes down pretty well. Yeah. Once you get past that initial bitterness. It's got a kick. What, it's kind of like us. A little bitterness up top, oh, and then once you get to... we're what? fucked. Why? This is 12%. Oh, I know. That's high. I knew we were going into. Oh, my God. I got four shows. Well, you're going to have a buzz for them. What are you going to do? Whew. All right. Give me the peeve. I got two shows. I'll be all right. Um, My peeve... Okay, so I'm on my flight, and the guy in front of me... He's like, it's like one of the things where you're like, are you out of your mind? He's looking at his dick. Like, literally, I'm in the first row waiting for him to move. And he goes, 14, 14. Oh, and I'm like, oh, I'm with you. Well, you know it's not here. Yeah. You know it's yes. not the first row. I've seen this. He's I'm going, so 14. with you. And he goes, 14. I'm just like. It's that way. What you think? It's you think it's towards the cockpit. Like, it ain't what? up. It ain't down. It's straight on. We're at we're at two. Fourteen. We're at 3A. What comes after the number one? Yes. Yes. Go this way, dude. I've seen that the guy's going. Hold on. Hold he literally on. looked at me like for help, and I'm like, "Do you need help with 14? Go, man. Who is who are these guys' parents? What is wrong with this guy? I'll tell you what. Even if I don't know the language, I yes. know I know enough. That that ain't one. Right, right. I don't care if you're on the metric system. I don't care if you're from the Middle East. It's fucking laid out for you. This but couldn't was, be simpler. Yeah, I was just like, come on. So that was one. I had another, I'm with you. I have another one for you. All right. This fucking happens all the time where you're on the subway and... Uh, 
the dude like they just don't have headphones and they're just listening to their music like this oh, through the yeah. speaker and you're just like that I don't get hey guess what I lost my headphones on the road last weekend you know what I did I sucked it up and looked at the fucking window here here I sucked it up and didn't listen to music for a minute we're li- living in a society it's so fucking rude and guess what it's never like some. It, by the way I know it's never a podcast it's never like <laughs> you know, they're never holding their phone up like this and they're like this is fresh air with Terry Gross <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta put on tipping point with Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> it's never that. You're right. It's always just like it's like some techno eh, bullshit. Eh, yeah. Yep. Eh, eh, eh. You're like, thank you. Yeah. Glad my life is fucking shittier because I've met you. I know. I know. Suck it up. You, you're, you're be considerate. You're making strangers' lives worse. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. You that's nailed it. That's who you are. That's the same. You are making people you've never met. You, you're annoying them. Yeah. And they're taking that energy with them to the next place. Yes. Now. I saw a New York Post article today. Man on subway slashed for telling a guy to turn his radio down. The guy in the radio just Jeez, cut I better him cut it face. out. What's that? I better cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? He, he cut this guy. <laughs> but it's, it's scary because, you know, if you're doing the, the music out loud, like, you're off already. Yeah. You're not you're not aware, you're not thinking about other people. You're right. So like but turning it down, like But like, it's you know what? I think they're close enough to us. I'm like, well, they own a phone. Yeah, but I mean They've so got, does every homeless guy sees got a phone. Yeah, that's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah, that is odd. Like you have a TikTok? What plan do you have? Yeah. <laughs> Pay me when you can. Right. Is there a hobo plan? There I must be, know. because they're doing well. It's definitely T-Mobile. It's got to be. They're always on the move. Yeah, or Cricket, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> I've seen Cricket around. But yeah, that's true. Yeah, what is that with the no headphones? Get some fucking headphones, suck it up, go to that weird electronic store in the airport, pay the overpriced amount because you lost them. Yeah, I knew I wanted AirPods, so I fucking I waited it out. And yeah. I was like, I'll wait till I get back. I'm not going to buy some, you know, bullshit pair. You lost those? You lost, lost your pods? Them. Yeah. Uh, they were a gift, too. I felt bad. I lost mine, too. It sucks to lose the AirPods. It they does. Really, and they also, I mean, they really... Fucking Apple, give a pair out every once in a while. I they know. have to cost 275 I bucks. I know, exactly. Fucking criminals. And they, the way I they're... call so many people criminals, by the way. <laughs> I've noticed that's like my new thing. I'm just like, fucking criminal. I like that. They're designed in a way, too, that they, they slip away. You know, they'll slip into a couch or they'll go down a grate. You know, they, they're just that eggshell kind of smooth, no corners. They just slip out of your life. I, they're so evil. I picture them just, like, testing them in a lab, and they're like, make sure they fall through this grate yes, right here. exactly. Can they, fall, they, they fell through. Perfect. Exactly. Just, just sneaky enough. Exactly. And somebody told me that, look, you can look this up. iPhones are designed to start not working after three years i'm sure like a relationship but uh it's it's like might stop working after six months <laughs> it must have been a samsung <laughs> but yeah it's true it's like come on what are you doing to us and i get it they're trying to make a buck but like we're, we're trying to be happy here and live our lives it, it's a great point i mean it, it, they do break but then i'm also like i just look at it like taxes at this point i'm like i'm gonna spend an yeah. absurd amount of money on a phone because i use it so damn much yeah, we're we're hooked. They got us by the balls. I mean, it's our calendar, our e- our mail, our weather, our recording. We're our so dependent on it. Podcast. You got a book on there. I don't know how the Amish do it. I ah. feel like I go without a phone for like a day, and I'm just like, oh, I go nuts. Oh man, dude, I, I went without headphones, and I was like, I'm fucking strong. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I gave myself a feeling. few of these. I was like, I'm pretty. I'm I'm a strong man. I know, but I bet if you did like if you did ten days without it. You you would make it. Well, you used to have a bit about like, you know, didn't you have a bit where you're like, I have to listen to my thoughts? Oh, What was yeah. that bit again? It was like, yeah, you ever forget your headphones and you realize thoughts are not good. And then it's it's this long bit about how, you know, it's good to drown that shit out every now and then. and uh, make it's, sh- like a, it's like a mental cleansing. Yes. The way people like juice. Yes. It's like that for your brain. You're exactly. Like, yeah. I try to listen, like, I only listen to like, music with lyrics like i try to cut that back a little bit because if i if i do it too much i'm not gonna be thinking of jokes or something if i listen to jazz or like classical i can kind of like listen to that and still kind of like be like bit idea bit idea but if i'm just listening to like you know 
fucking staying alive by the Bee Gees. I'm just, you know, I'm like, I'm not thinking of bits. I'm like, I'm doing the little fucking dance. You That's know? true. Yeah. But I do need music like that to get me amped. Like, it's either that or like three, 6 p.m. coffees on the road. Oh, yeah. And I'd like to keep it to one at that time. Yeah. Maybe two. Somebody gave me a hot tip. They said, listen to video game music because really? it, it, it it's designed to like ramp your brain up. But I tried and it was too it was too rampy. I don't I don't buy that because I think like video games like I never feel connected after listening to like I play video games. I'm never like, man, my brain feels good. No, you know? same, same. We're lucky we're not a, I know guys will spend nine hours on Call of Duty or I whatever. can't I mean like I'd love to. I mean, during the pandemic, uh, Taylor and I would do like we. I bought an Xbox for LA, yeah, and we and we started playing Halo co-op mode. What? It was so fucking fun. That is great, dude. It also like you end up enjoying each other a lot. Yeah, because you're like literally like get down, I got you here. You know, like <laughs> you're like talk, you're like have each other's back, and you're shooting people. Yeah, one of them's leading, one of you's leading the way, the other's just like shooting. It's fucking fun. That sounds nice. I got, I get why people lose not, but we would like play for like four hours and be like, oh my, our fucking lives. Like we got to do something productive. Yeah, you but, can burn through. I used to play Candy Crush for like two days, and my girl was like, you got to like go to get a shower. It's addictive. It's addictive. Games are I, the only one I'll do now at all. I'll, I have a PS4 at home, and I'll do like uh, I'll do like NBA 2K. Just when I'm like, I'll like listen to a podcast or something and just play just to like. But I'm not even really playing. I'm doing like front office mode. I'm making trades and shit. That's what happens when you get older. You like you don't even want to play the game. You just want to like restore the franchise. Yeah, <laughs> I just like want the Knicks to be good again and like a make believe game. Right, you know? right, yeah, yeah. It'd be nice if you could do that with your own life. Like, all right, I'm at a job interview. I well, killed it. Well, that's The it. Sims, right? Is that The Sims? Kind yeah. of, isn't that kind of The Sims? Like, you kind of make a guy and he has got a life. Oh, really? I thought it was just Sim City. That's where I stopped with Sim City. Dude, we're fucking old. And we're getting old. Sim City. I because like the fact that I even get that reference. You're like the football stadium. Yeah, we'll build, we'll build a football stadium. Yeah, we need roads. We're building out suburbs. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that's the fucking best. Oh, yeah. But video games, they've come a long way, and people are going to start fucking. That's going to be a thing. In video games? Oh, yeah. I guarantee it. Really? With with virtual reality, the way it's going, it's, oh, it's going right. to be crazy. Maybe that'll be like what Tinder is in the future. I think so. You like virtual fuck before you meet. Probably. We're just right? going to keep filtering. It's crazy that you. Used oh, to go there's to, no substitute for real like sex. No, no, no. but like I think to meet people, it's gonna keep. We're already doing like no, no, yes, no, no, yes, just off appearance, basically. Wow, yeah. And then it's gonna be like, let's see how we'd be sexually compatible. Exactly. Yeah, you're gonna fuck like virtually before you even meet. Yeah. I don't want to waste my time with someone I'm not sexually compatible with. And then, like, here's what's gonna happen next: when you like, if you're in a long distance thing, they'll make like molds of your dick and vagina. So you can, Ooh. like, fuck on FaceTime. That'll be, like, the next thing. You're right. Don't you think? Holy shit. That'll probably be the next move. That's one way where guys are lucky. It's like our dicks are concealed to the last minute. You know, like, women's kind of tits are out. You can see Unless how... you're a fucking subway pervert. That's, <laughs> well, what they, that's yeah. what they open with. I don't think they're uh, really hitting the dating scene. I prefer them to the fucking people without the headphones. I agree. At least they're keeping themselves. At least they're fucking, like... I'm like, that's deeply mentally ill. Yeah. You're just fucking rude. Yeah, right. I'll take, like, rude, I'm like, fuck you, you're closer to us, you should know better. Yes. Whipping the dick out, I'm like, you're far gone, you're you're mentally, I mean. That's a good point, that's you know. a good point. Uh, the guy at my old gym used to blare the music, and you're like, what are you doing? Like, who wants to hear, and I would have headphones in, so I would jack them up, and I he would always give me, like, Boy. a weird look. Other noise that's external is fucking annoying. Yeah. Like, there's just construction going on in my building all day, and I'm like, enough. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm trying yeah. to fuck, like, I'm, that's the thing about the pandemic is, like, at, once it hit, a lot of people started working from home more. So people that are, like, always doing shit in their homes, I'm like, wrap it up. I know. Like, a lot of us, this is our office now. Yes, and uh, we're- It was always our office, but- True, but our schedules are a little different, too. Like, some people are like, all right, people go to work at 9, and we'll start doing construction at 9. They're like, ah, I'm sleeping at 9. Oh, it's, no one respects a night schedule. No. People like us, right. bartenders, anyone who just works at night, wait staff who works late nights, no one respects us because- we're not normal society. They look at us as like almost like failures or something. Yes. Where they're like, well, you're not 
successful. You work at night. And we're like, no, we're doing all right. But yeah. it's, but it, it, they look at us as like, well, you're others at least. At yes. the very least, you're others. Well, because to most people, it's like dinner day. Like, how many girlfriends have you had? Like, just skip the show. Let's get dinner. Oh, Let's go yeah. watch a concert. And you're like, that's when I work. Not a I lot because it didn't last long. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They when, never when, last. When they dinner is a sign of stability to a partner. Oh, yeah. You the know, ladies like, love dinner. We'll breakfast and lunch the shit out of you, but guess what? Like dinner, it's like now we're at a point where we can kind of like navigate the shows around our other bullshit. Yeah. But there was many years where you're like, it's this or nothing. This is it. This is my job, and I got to get better at it, and I got to take this gig. This is at a club. This is at a place I want to keep working. And they're like, ah, oh. and you're like. You knew I was a comic. You you you're banging me because I'm a comic. And I know now but you don't want me to fucking, do comedy. They like you, but they want you. They they're just trying to change you to be something slightly different. They see something they like about yeah. you, and they're like, "Let me just try to shift it right over here." And you're like, "I ain't moving." You got that right. This is it. This is it. Sister. This is who I am. Uh, I mean, shit. There is funny during breakups for me. I'm definitely like, I'll change anything. I'll do whatever. And then I'm like, oh, no, I won't. Wait, you won't. Why did I, I say that? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, and look, guys do it, too. They go meet some stripper and they're like, I think you should stop stripping. And it's like, well, that's how you met me, you psycho. Um, this is who I am. I'm a stripper all the way. Then that stripper's like, I should start comedy. Uh, <laughs> Stormy Daniels, you ruined it for everybody. <laughs> oh. Stormy Daniels, man. What a fucking, what a run. I know. I it's fun because I jerked off to her because you are. Did you? It's fun. Well, I watched her porn because you, yeah. you see her on the news. So it's like you know her, and then you get yeah. to watch the porn after that, and you're like, I mean, the fact that she was threatened was pretty fucked up. I thought. Wait, what threat? Yeah, one of Trump's goons. I think it was wasn't it Michael Cohen mad who threatened. Yeah, he threatened her. Like he was a goon. He's like a fucking goomba lawyer. Really? A, a Joomba lawyer. Uh, <laughs> Joomba. Well, he was a fucking. It's hilarious. I heard him on Bill Maher, and he was like really trying to be like. You know, this motherfucker should be in prison. You're like, didn't you just get out of prison? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, you're not the most credible. I'm like, I'm not. Trump's trash. But, like, you're not the most credible person ever. Right. I think he's on, like, this redemption tour. Oh, and, like, wow. I'm sure he's I think he's got a book deal or something. I mean, of I'm course. sure anyone who's close to Trump, they're like, we'll pay you big money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, wait. He threatened to hit her or, or sue her or? I think it was just like. Well, it was something along the lines of like, "Be quiet or else." I think it was oh. something like that. Yeah. Well, she she's got guts because she, she does have guts. I'll give it to her. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, she went out and spread the news. I'd be a much bigger fan if she wasn't doing like one nighters at comedy clubs. But I know. like, guess what? It's like, I guess it's a sh- transitory uh, existence as a sure <laughs> to do what she does. And uh, I've been to many comedy clubs. They're like, oh, it's a light night. Stormy Daniels sold it out last night. You're like, <laughs> Come on, <laughs> I'll I'll blow you, whatever you want. But yeah, I wonder like it's pretty hot. I mean, she's a hot lady. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's her thing. That's yeah, her thing. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> but it's fun seeing a woman on the news and be like, oh, I can just type my fingers and see her getting railed by some uh, Italian guy. That's her other thing. That's the other thing. Yeah, <laughs> and it's fun. To, it's fun to get to know someone. You know how sometimes you meet an actor when they're old, and you're like, "Oh yeah," and then you see them young, you're like, "Wow, look at that!" It was fun seeing a person on the news and going back and seeing the fuck. Yeah, thing. yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, should we do bits? Let's do a bit. Where are we? Have we gone long? Or are we good? I think we're a little long. All right, we'll 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 keep it tight here. What do, what do you got there? Hairy legs. You, I do have hairy legs. Same, same. What, uh... I'm hairy-legged and nowhere else. Really? Yeah, it's weird. I got the happy trail. Yeah, you got nothing pubes, on your chest. I'm no a hairy chest. guy. I'm a fucking werewolf. Harry is good. Mike really? Roman's always like, I wish you were hairier. Really? So Harry's in. Yeah, I've never had, like... I had one girlfriend when I was in, like, college, and, and she, uh, she, she was like, can I shave your chest? And I was like, yeah, I what? guess. Yeah, I've never had... Every other woman I've ever dated, like, she was, like, into some fucking... Lesbian. She was anti... She was anti-fucking Jew, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. It. I think she was, like... <laughs> yeah. anti-Semitic. I think she was. I think she was against us. She was like, can I shave your chest? And she took a razor and shaved it, and I was Whoa. like... I was like, I definitely look in better shape without the hair. Like, the hair just makes you look a little more washed up. You think? I yeah. thought the hair would like hide some some bad. I'm sure it does a little bit of that too, but uh, I don't know. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, she shaved it. I remember being like, 
who am I? I just shaved my chest. I let a woman shave my chest. Yeah, my dad would. He was the hairiest guy ever, and he shaved. And I was like, ugh, get out of the house, get, get a hotel. Out. Yeah, it's almost like a fucking. You get a scarlet letter. Or yeah, something. completely, completely. It's almost like, what are you doing? I, uh, yeah, I regret it. Yeah, I was young. I didn't. I didn't know. And I was like, oh, I guess I should do that. Yeah. No, and, this is uh, better. No, I'm a, I'm a hairy. I'm a hairy guy. Right in, ladies. Let us know what you think. Let me, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh. What do I have? Um, I, I don't have a lot, honestly, because all my bits are either, either they're either hitting or they're just shit, and they're Same. not even worth bringing here. So I either have bits that are working or just garbage. Um, let's see what I get. I will say I did a. We were riffing last night on the show, and I did a. I did a joke in here, and it killed with you and Salicuse, and I did on stage, and it hit. So I think I might have a bit there. What is it? It was just about like. You're allowed to be shallow if the woman is marginalized. Like I was like, oh, I got a, I got a big titty poster here, and everybody's like, "Geez, you creep!" And I'm like, "Well, they're trans," and everybody's like, "Oh, great, love the poster," and it's killing. That's good. Yeah, it calls out, it calls out a, a bullshit factor. Right, so right. I, this isn't the bit, but there's something about this. I think you said last week with uh, with. My friend Will Sylvans, who would do the thing, where oh, he's like, you yeah. know, he's black, and he would come by me, give me all your fucking money, I'm like ah, that's a great. I well, love that angle. And, and then he go, you're racist, and I'd be like, <laughs> I mean, you said give me all your fucking. I didn't even see you. You just said give yeah. me all your fucking money. So I was trying to think, like, I need like an angle. This may it might be something like I think like, I think the angle is maybe like, yeah, the message trumps the messenger. Yes, I'm gonna kill you. You know what I mean? That's a good way to it might go. Be with something it. like. Just to put the theory to test, I send him a message from a fake email account, Moshe Greenberg. I have your son. <laughs> if he comes back, you fucking Jew. You're right. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's you know good. what I mean? There's something there. Uh, that's not the bit though. Let's see. That you was hate. Just yeah, it's the message more than the messenger. I couldn't even see the messenger. That's the thing. All right, let me try this. I, I would say down. he's racist in that ang- in that argument. Because he's saying, like, oh, you assume You're making I'm this black. about race. Yeah. So here's one. I have a thing about, um, it's not really a bit, but there's something I was thinking about because I had the doctor's appointment today. I really, doctors are just, I'm almost glad that the pandemic, like, knock on wood, that Delta dies down a little bit. People get vaccinated and shit. But, like, you know, some of these fucking doctors it's like i'm sick of calling them heroes they're so dismissive <laughs> we need a course at at medical school for bedside manner yeah can we get one course where you learn how to talk to a human being right and don't act like you all think you're dr fucking house <laughs> every doctor comes in with so what was the joke i wrote down it was like so this guy <laughs> he he uh like so i have this spinal problem and he's like he's skimming my chart and he just starts humming while he's doing it, I'm like, could you maybe not approach my life with the same energy as uh, a prison chain yard gang? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, is this my fuck? Like, is this like a, a long term problem or cool hand Luke? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it's true. Because they they look at us as we're the product. Like, we're just on a conveyor belt. You're the 13th guy he's seen. It's that a lot day. of fucking money, though. The problem is we're all desperate. Mm. It's literally if you walked into a restaurant and you were like, I'm starving. Yeah. I waited fucking weeks to get this reservation. That's good. That's even shitty doctors. Right. Like, can you imagine, like, like, can you imagine going to a shitty restaurant? You're like, thank God we got here. Yeah. Thank God I made it to Wendy's. I, I've waited months for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And it's all like you want a you want a spicy chicken sandwich that'll be four hundred and forty five dollars. <laughs> yeah, but I used to bring a car into a shop, and you're like, I don't have a lot of money. Please don't be anything bad. Please don't even. And that was just a car, and that was just about money. This is about cancer or whatever the hell scary thing. I might need surgery. I might need this. So this is my life, and you can't just be humming. I think yeah. that's a that's a good angle. Something about the humming. Yeah, it, yeah, like that type of. Um, nonchalant uh, yes. casualness could you maybe uh can you maybe pretend to give a shit yeah yeah <laughs> could you maybe pre- i mean i think that's the thing where it's like that's could be an angle put every doctor in an improv class too like just so they have they know how to like okay this guy's gonna want this i know where to go have here. an acting class just like yeah a fucking, just like where you're like Pretend. I, I understand this is stressful for you. Give them some fucking basic lines. Like, yeah. my girlfriend and I, like, we fight, and there's, like, basic lines we have to patch things up. Like, if she's upset, I don't say, 
I go, yes. I understand you're upset. That must be tough. Right. Like, you have lines you say because you see they're upset and yes. stressed. Could you maybe approach, like, you're at a, this is a fucking high stress job. Exactly. You know? Maybe that's the angle. I, w- I only want doctors with girlfriends. Or, yeah. or a married Ooh, doctor. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad because you know, like your girlfriend goes, "Do I look fat in this?" You just know what to say. You know the moves, and he should know the moves with the patient. Funny, my dad's always like, "See the Jew, <laughs> see the Jewish doctor." <laughs> 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 he thinks there'll be a better connection. Yeah, that's uh, hilarious. hilarious. That's so funny. See the Jew. What? How do you say that in the lobby? You do know, you guys like... have a Jew? Because <laughs> it could go either way. It sounds like you hate Jews, too. <laughs> Who, which one of you is Jewish? I don't want that guy. Your appointment with Dr. Wang. Do you have a Dr. Cohn? Yeah. <laughs> a Dr. Cohn would be more my speed here. At least the Jew, though, will take everything seriously. He'll be like, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Are you going to be okay? You're like, yeah, yeah, it's a pimple. They're not like that. Really? Yeah, figured- oh, my God. I'm from a family of Jewish doctors. They're fucking like, all right, here we go. What do you uh- got? Damn. No, it's just doctors are just cynical. The way we're cynical with comedy, they're cynical. They deal with idiots all day. Right, right. They deal with people and hypochondriacs, and they're just tired and overworked and jaded, and they're arrogant. It's a fucking annoying combination. Yeah. So there's this thing where they're like, what do you got? Mm. You're like, a sharp pain in my neck. And they're like, uh-huh. Yeah. Do they do this for it? You're like, I'm in pain as we're speaking. Can you not talk down to me? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll f- I'll figure it out. It's not a mechanic. I have feelings. I'm not a Honda. Please relate to me. Talk to me. I'm scared. How about you get you get this one from the doctor? You're like, uh, he looks at the chart and he goes, ooh. You're like, what do you mean, ooh? You're not allowed to go, ooh. So you don't want too much reaction either. But you, you want some reaction. I'll play with this. What do you got? All right. I, I'm working on this bit about how... Uh, I'm in my 30s, which is an interesting time to be in your 30s because you get to watch old people and young people hate each other. You know, it's like, fuck you, boomer, you're clueless. And then the old people are like, Gen Z's entitled and lazy and and, and uh, pussies and all this. Everybody hates everybody. Yeah, and I'm in the middle and I get to watch. I have my grandpa and my nephew is like 14, 13, and they're, they fight all day, but they're similar. They're very similar. They both sit at home all day watching the news. They both uh, have no muscle tone. They're both like victims. They both count the 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 uh, the diversity. You know, like my grandpa's like a lot of black people on this show, and my nephew's like good diversity. You know, and they both have blue hair. There's a lot of similarities. And then hold on, I wrote something down. They fight all the time, and it's fascinating to watch. Uh oh, they both think. They're not doing enough. Like the, my grandpa's like, you kids don't go outside. You don't have to walk to school. You don't get jobs. And my nephew's like, old people, you ruined everything. You should be donating to this. You should be going out and helping. They both think they're not doing enough. And uh, it's fascinating to watch. And the big punch is like, you kids are pussies. You can't eat a peanut. And the, the kid's like, well, I eat ass. You didn't do that. And then he's like, well, I was shot at in Nam. And he's like, well, I was shot at in Homeroom. So they're actually oh, that's good. they're yeah. kind of the same, but they fight. It's it could be something. I was shot in Nama. What was the line before that? Uh, you can't. You're a pussy. You can't even eat a peanut. You kids, well, you know these ass. days. And he's like, well, we, we eat ass. So like we're 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 it, the basically the point is like they're both tough, just in different ways, but they don't see it, and they're actually quite similar. That's why they fight. You know what? It seems like like the kids, the younger generation. Is tough, like almost involuntarily. Mm, like what they do you had. Mean? Well, Nam, you were like you could kind of dodge a draft. You can't like dodge school. Oh, interesting. You know what I mean? Like, it's like forced or, or the on peanut, you. That's an allergy, right? Yeah, it. They just they're born that way. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Interesting. Do, there's something about like Both points are valid. Like, I, I listen to them. I'm like, this is fascinating because, like, you're both making some solid defense arguments, but. And then you look at yourself and you're like, I eat peanuts and ass. Oh, that's good. Maybe I should bring it back to me. Yeah. Because I'm in the middle and I, well, I almost. Because I have thing. a bit about how, like, there weren't school shootings when I was in school. Yeah. It, it was rare. I mean, yeah. Columbine was a huge deal. That was huge. And then, uh, 
I remember I have a bit where I say, you know, a different, very different bit, but I say, you know, uh, when I was in school, there weren't a lot of mass shootings. So every once in a while, we would poke a kid to see if he had it in him, you know, <laughs> till I get into a bit. But That's it's like, funny. but there's something about, so you kind of missed the mass shootings and Nam. Like, yes. you're the most worthless of all. Oh, That's the bit. Oh, interesting. Maybe maybe it should be, I don't need to ask or peanuts. Interesting. <laughs> maybe that's funnier. Because you're the, the bit is that you're the most worthless of all. You're like, shit, I missed the Gulf War and I was too big a pussy for Iraq. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. I missed both. I missed it all. Yeah. Huh. Do you think there's anything about them being similar? Yeah, for sure. I think they are similar. But they both like dealt with race riots and stuff like they're there. There's a lot of similarities with like the 50s and 60s and the 2020s or whatever you call it. 2000 teens. You yeah, know, like interesting. weird presidents. You both, you both protested. Yeah. On opposing sides. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. They're both. Play they the are victim. similar. They are similar. They're very similar. They both play the victim. Like young kids are like. We have it so hard now with income inequality, and we can't afford this, and no one's paying us. And then old people are like, "I walked eight miles uphill through the snow to get to school." You don't know what it was like. Yeah, when when you were my age, you owned a home, and they're like, "I also got shot at by the fucking Vietnamese." Yeah, like yeah. every yeah, that's a valid point. It's a valid from, point from young people. Like, yeah, life is harder now in that way, but we're also more privileged. We also have. We got Uber Eats, you know, like my own, my, my grandfather. It is, it is real hard right now. I do, I do feel for young people where it's like, but at the same time, like. There's, there's air conditioning. We, and, we, and well, we say, it, we say it's worse, but then look at what fucking the Vietnam generation. Exactly. Fuck. That's why it's, it's a. You got drafted into an unwinnable war. Insane. Insane. So I, yeah, I mean, it's shit. a fascinating argument because they're both making some solid points. And on paper, I feel like people get, you know, participation trophies, you kids. And they're like, I don't know, that wasn't my idea. Like, quit quit yelling at me. Yeah, the shit they blame kids for is like, it's kind of the fault of parents. It's really less kids. And pa parents should have done a better job preparing them for failure. Right. Parents, right. parents don't understand that. Kid, like, if your kid's crying at losing... That's okay. That's part of life. Right, right. They should be prepared to lose a little in life, and they'll win at some point. But, like, if you get beaten up too much by losing, then you're probably going to fucking be a loser. Yeah. If it's yeah. too, I mean, like, it should hurt you as a kid. Like, I yeah, fucking remember crying, losing sports as a kid. Oh, like, yeah. that's part of life, you know? Totally. You, but that's, it's. We kind of. It's I necessary like to learn. Part, lo losing helps is. you someday win. But I think it that sheltering fucked some some young people up. I think. I think so for sure. I think that's the old person's grievance with the participation trophy. Yeah. But I also do think like, see, I'm in between. Where I think inclusion is good, yeah. but I also think kids just being handed shit is not great. I completely so I, agree. I kind of go back and forth where it's like it's good to have to work for stuff because yes. that's a good lesson for life. Where like life is going to be hard, but then. So I, 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 with the participation trophy, it's like, I like the angle of like, what was my idea? Yeah. Yeah. Same. I wanted to earn it, motherfucker. Right, right. Yeah. You, that was you, your, your son's idea. Who gets, what that. kind of fucking noble person gets a participation trophy and is like, good for me. Yeah. Like, we're not sad. happy with that shit either. I know. Right. All right. All right. This is it's good. A, a rich premise. Okay. Yours is much richer than mine. I mean, I kind of threw some bullshit. No, out no, it, but... I like yours. I like yours. And they, they don't all have to be this rich, uh, you know. This is fucking delicious. Giant by the way. bit. Yeah. Did this not become drinkable? Too drinkable, and I uh, might well, have to got, go. I got three sleep. spots now because I, I three at the cellar. Oh. They just added one. Oh. Baby, I'm fucking back. I'm Let's gonna plug sleep some in gigs. an alley. Uh, yeah. We, what do you got here? You got the phone out. When did out? this come out, Matt? Three <laughs> weeks. Jesus, hey, Jane. So not the, so the twenty fifth by then. The twenty fifth this comes out. Good so Lord. I would have just, <laughs> I would have just been to Zanies. I'll be at Lexington Comedy off Broadway the fifth through seventh of August. I'll be at uh, Kansas City Comedy Club uh, in Missouri the twelfth through fourteenth. Portland the nineteenth through twenty first. Royal Oak Comedy Castle the twenty sixth through twenty eighth. 
Boston, Laugh Boston, the 2nd to 4th of uh, September. The 9th to 11th, I will be at the Atlanta Punchline. Great diner connection to it. Oh, yeah. Millersville, PA, the 15th of September, uh, 16th through 19th. Philly Helium, as good as it gets, baby. Let's fucking dance. 23rd through 20, or 22nd through 25th, Moon Tower. Might add a little fucking Houston or Dallas action that week beforehand. Look out on my fucking social media. And the last week in the month, I'll be in St. Louis Helium. So fucking check it out. Samuel.com slash shows. Hell yeah. All right, all right. I'm at, uh, speaking of helium, I'm at Philadelphia this weekend. One of my all-time favorite clubs. Is it, does it get any better than that room? Love Philly. I love that town. I love that club. I love the people. Philly is fucking special. That farmer's market too, right? Oh, yeah. What's it called again? Reading Terminal? Is that it? Oh, uh, I don't know. Did I fuck that is up? That is that Rittenhouse right? Square? area or fish town i don't know but they all blend together but i do i love philly i have like a i have a strong love for philadelphia same they're same. Good, and they're good people great people great crowds they're smart but they don't get upset so it's like the perfect it's a blend. good mix of blue collar but also white collar it's yes like they come together in like a beautiful way yeah yeah that's a perfect yeah. boston is similar boston's great Buffalo helium after that. Classic. Come out to Buffalo. That's that's a Classic. fun town. That's a town that needs a laugh, god damn it. Then Dayton, Funny Bone, Appleton and Skyline, Arlington Improv in Texas, Brea Improv out in Orange County, Albany, hello, uh, West Palm Beach, Comedy Connection in Providence, another great one, Madison, yeah, fuck, Wisconsin. You could, you could belt out that trophy bit in uh, West Palm Beach. <laughs> yeah, They'd yeah. Be like, Boo! That's true. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, one of the one of the all time greats. You're there soon. Zanies in Nashville, Rochester. I'm right on your heels. Richmond, funny bone. That could be tough. We're dancing, brother. Portland, Helium, Laugh, Boston, and uh, yeah, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, Vancouver. And hopefully, they van- uh, uh, Canada Vancouver. opens up by then. Vancouver's That's- special, man. That's oh, like- what a city! Canada, Vancouver gets not nearly enough love. It's the might be the prettiest city in uh, I don't know North America. It's just that seawall. Remember we were there together. Oh yeah, we did that festival thanks to Phil had, Hanley. Phil Hanley set that up and he just toured the whole fucking city to us. It was yeah, so, what a special week! You, me, Carmen Lynch, Gary Veter, yes, Joe List. Like you get what, why Hanley's so delicate because growing up there, you're like this is too pretty. <laughs> you got no. Well, edge. he was in Oshawa. He is a, he grew oh. up originally in a suburb of Toronto, so he actually grew up in like an oil town. Oh, really? So he it makes no sense why he is this like prim and proper model. <laughs> All his friends are like tough fucking oh, like, okay. oil town people. Well, that explains. And Phil is like this handsome fucking model. Yeah, gorgeous model. He used to wear cardigans. Now he wears tie dye. I can't figure him out. Became but... a hippie. Yeah. Follow Phil Hanley, our buddy Phil M. Hanley on Instagram. Great comic. Killer uh, comic. He's great got stuff. a special in the works. going to be dope. And, uh, yeah. Dude. Uh, we'll plug that up. We'll plug it up. Subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash we might be drunk pod. And man, we just, we got so much good stuff coming. Keep yes. your eyes open. Peeled for Fat Cat Rye. That shit's coming, dude. Hell yeah. You know you know what else is very drinkable and goes down easy? This pod. Tell a friend. Spread the love. Keep sharing Gotham it. Gotham Studios, you fucking rock. Matt, we love you, dog. Yeah. Uh, I mean, shit. This is, uh, I just said dog sincerely. That's how hard this shit goes <laughs> down. I meant it. I we meant love dog. you, fam. We're in, you're in on the ground floor, by the way. Get, snap your fingers, and this is going to be a bar with uh, a whole We're setting. A whole we, got a, we, got a, we got a guy, a mixologist, or whatever the hell you want to call it, a bartender. I, I like the idea of having special guest bartenders, too. Oh, that'd be great. If you're a bartender, like, fucking call in and be on this show. Make a sh- like, I like Good that, idea. too. I like bringing drinks every once in a while, but having a bartender here would be crrazy. Hell yeah. Great idea. And uh, we're going to get some guests on eventually. We just gotta, we're, we're, we're fine-tuning and, and hand-picking. So uh, yeah, email us, send us stuff. Rex P. We might drinks. be drunk pod at gmail dot com. All right, keep on drinking. Very drinkable. We might be drunk. We might be drunk. As long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk. Raise a glass, let's talk shit. Head peeps, Rex, and a bit. Maybe drunk. We might be drunk. Yeah.